Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time? Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe I'm afraid I was just about to lock up for the night. I talk, you listen, you understand. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the Fan Carpet. Stephen, it's wonderful to speak to you today. How have you been? I've been good, mate, thank you. How are you? Yeah, doing very well, thanks. Uh, how's the family? All good, all good. Yeah. We, 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 there was a little COVID outbreak at, at the kids' school, so they're back. Not us, not our kids, but um, so they're here. We've got a house full of... Um, Zoom children as we speak. All right, okay. Busy, busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the industry? Um, I don't know. If I, I don't. I don't know if I can say defining. I I did a play at school when I was about eleven, uh-huh. and uh, and loved it. And then from then on, kept playing sort of big parts in school plays, and 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 then I but I do remember, and then I sort of joined theatre groups because I was really enjoying it, and um, and then I do remember, I don't know how old you are, mate, but 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 back in the day when you were taking your options to, for what you were going to do at O level, you went and spoke to a careers advisor, mm. and and Mr. Morris. Mr. Morish, I think Mr. Morish, I think it was, um, said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I think I want to act. And it was the first time that anybody at our school had asked him that. And he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. He didn't know, like, back then, we're talking 35 years ago, longer than that, um, he, he didn't have anything there like for him to be able to sort of turn to and go, okay, this is what you do. And, um, but I, I remember that was probably the first time I'd ever said it out loud to a person of like power. <laughs> right, okay. Um, yeah. I, I would have been about 14, I think. Awesome, awesome. Um, so what was it about Confession that made you want to be a part of it? And what can you tell us about your, about uh, Victor Strong? Dave Beaton, who I've always known as, as Ronnie Thompson, um, writer, director, um, is a friend and we, we, we get on really well. And we were in the middle of the first lockdown uh, and um, pretty much like now, in fact, we were mm. doing homeschool with the kids and <laughs> who'd have thought we'd still be doing that two years on. And, um, and he, he got in touch with me and he said, um, I've written something, I'm writing something, it's for you. I think it's really, I think it's interesting and, uh, and I, I want you to have a look at it. And, uh, and obviously one of the things that, that people have been doing and this makes complete sense, obviously, is you're looking at, during this, this last 18 months, two years, people have been looking to do things that are in one or two locations, mm -hmm. small cast, uh, able to do with the smallest crew possible, um, and in a sort of truncated amount of time, so that the the risk of exposure is is very low. And um, and so he he had gone into writing and writing something with that with that in mind. How do I how do I do that and and you know 
big fan of The Departed, big fan of, of um, those sort of undercover movies and things like that and, and, and thrillers like that and, and sort of set down to, to sort of try and write something in that vein. And, and then sent it to me and I, and, and I couldn't believe how, how, how well realized it was for a first draft in terms of like setting up this, this amazing character of Victor Strong. And um, so we immediately sort of started saying, well, how, how are we gonna, how are we gonna make this happen? You know, if, the, if the world is closed, mm. you know, what do you do? And, but in the meantime, I started doing some research into, I'm not gonna give too much away, but I started doing some research into the type of person that I was, where I would have come from. Um, the movie set in Boston. So whilst we were setting up, I went, I, I did quite a lot of uh, research into you know, where we've grown up, where we've got school, how he would have become what he'd become, what, what had led him to all of these things, which was really interesting for me because obviously one of the joys of, one of the joys of lockdown was that you had loads of time on your hands to do things like that and go down internet rabbit holes. Um, so that was really fun. And, and, and Colin was at the top of our list when we first started trying to find Father Peter. Mm. Um, and we were able to get Colin. That was amazing. Claire Hope Ashity is an old friend of mine. We, we managed to get Claire. That was fantastic. So, so, all of those things which is a great confluence of sort of everything coming together as it as we were about to shoot and it, you know we shot it in 12 days and that is, and it's a it's there's a lot of dialogue there is a lot of twists and turns and, and i thought they did an amazing job of creating you know as we've already said it's one location so you have to be really sort of clever in how you shoot that without mm. it sort of feeling like you're just stuck yeah. Uh, it's set in a church, which immediately means you've got the sort of whole church, you've got the nave, you've got the, the vestry, you've got um, different portions of the church to be able to use. And uh, doing so and utilising it in a way that you can sort of, because it's a thriller, um, keeping those, uh, keeping all those moments alive, as well as the important things of exposition and telling the stories of who these people are, you know. Absolutely. Um, now, you mentioned it before, but how was it to work with the legendary Colmini? Just lovely. Um, it's just a great bloke. And um, we got on so well, really loved each other. And, um, and because it was locked down and because everywhere was closed, all restaurants were closed, hotels were closed, we, was, we were living in, on, on a closed golf course in a sort of little country club. And we had these little wooden cabins next to each other. And, um, and that was really nice because we were able to eat together, prep together, work out what we were doing the next day, what we were trying to achieve with the scenes, stuff like that, and, and go through the lines. And because there are, there are many lines, it's basically two people in a room talking about their lives. And so it was, brilliant and when you when you've only got 12 days to do that you know i've said this already but it, like one of the amazing things about i'd come straight from a job in bulgaria and and i got to london um uh, for 10 days because i had to quarantine and when i got to when i got to london it, it's it's a dream for an actor to sort of be locked in a room with a script uh, most people are like oh my god you've got to be on your own for 10 days in a room it's like actually it's perfect for an actor because you I just literally studied the script and worked and worked and worked and and had a dear friend of mine who's a dialect coach working on on, on my accent and just doing all of that research that ordinarily children and other bits of work and other stuff and life get in the way. So mm. in terms of prep, it's it it for, for these things I've got coming out, it was a joy because <laughs> having five days by ten days by yourself in a hotel room to learn the lines is unexpected. Absolutely. Um, and now you, you mentioned Claire already. She's a she's a friend of yours. So how, what was it like to work with her? Being that um, it's literally just three people in the church. <laughs> yeah. Well, Claire and I did did a job together 
in 2016 called Shots Fired with Sonal Latham and Steph James and, and Richard Dreyfuss and Helen Hunt. And, and we, we had gotten, oh, she's obviously is, the, is, is one of the lead characters in Children of Men when she was mm. much younger and, and she's amazing. She is, she's incredible. She's amazing. And, and, um, and so, and most people here just think she's American. Nobody would, nobody even would believe that she's English. <clears throat> And um, so, so getting her was really great because um, not only is she a fantastic actress, but it was just, I knew we, she's fucking funny as well. So I knew that having her as part of her and Colin and me, it, it was going to be great. And it was, and a lot of fun. Um, but she's also brilliant. So it was lovely because, because once you're like, once we're up and running and we're working, um, and we all stayed in our accent the whole time, which is quite important. Even so, even though obviously Colin's Irish and the two of us are British, staying in your accent is very helpful. And when you've got a couple of other actors who are prepared to do that around you, it's really helpful. Um, if, if the, um, because it's, because sometimes when you're working with an English crew, you want to sort of be part of the gang and chatting away with your, with, with friends and, 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 but the staying accent is is really sort of key, so it doesn't drop. And having the other two doing that was was awesome. Mm. So just having Claire there as a mate and being brilliant as she is, it was just it, it, it was lovely to sort of connect with her again. Wonderful. Um, and obviously the talent doesn't stop there because you've got Dave Dave Benton behind the behind the scenes uh, writing yeah. and directing. Yeah. So what was that experience like? Well, <clears throat> we had. We had got together, he had, uh, I was, in fact, was it that job? I think it was that job. I think it was when I was doing Shots Fired, actually. I was in North Carolina. And Larry Lamb's a dear friend of mine. And Larry was doing, um, Larry was doing this hat and garden job. And um, <clears throat> he texted me and said, do you want to come and do a couple of days in, in London on a, on a, on a fun little project I'm doing. I said, I can't, I'm in North Carolina. And he said, they'll, they'll work out this, the, your dates around your North Carolina dates. And I was like, okay. He said, there's one thing that, that, that might turn it. Your character will be filming in Upton Park in, at West Ham. And I'm a massive West Ham supporter. And Upton Park was about to be knocked down. So I end up on the phone with David, who, who actually, directed that movie as Ronnie Thompson because that was his writing name and <clears throat> so Ronnie and I end up on the phone and he's like come to come to London we'll fly you over you'll be in you'll be in West Ham and so I it was one of those amazing things where my best friend in the world who you know is got forklift truck company in, in Tilbury Docks and his son met me and my son five years ago 2016 in Upton Park. I was there for two days and me and Dave hit it off. We really hit it off. And uh, we were the only people in Upton Park. It was amazing. And, um, and we've remained friends ever since and been trying to work together ever since. And there's been a couple of things that have come along that I haven't been able to do. And this came along and he bring it for me and it was just like the perfect vehicle for us all to get together again. He's a very, very smart, I mean, he's a machine when it comes to writing. He, he just, he's, he's written something that, that, that I can't really talk about, but he's got another thing coming up that is just absolutely brilliant. And, and, and so he, he touches base with me and asks me and sends me ideas. He sends me ideas and sometimes not for me, but sometimes to just give him notes for stuff. And we've just got a great working relationship. And, <clears throat> and I thought we did a fantastic job and, you know, one shouldn't have to talk about this, but <clears throat> you work, you, you interview people like this all the time, and, mm -hmm. and and one shouldn't have to talk about the fact that it was twelve days or that the budget was extremely low, because it's a movie and people and the audience don't know that when they go in. But what he managed to achieve in twelve days is insanity. Nobody mm -hmm. should have to do this in twelve days. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, you know, it's it's it's. 
it's it's incredible what 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 we achieved and, and with with so little. I'm I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. So, do you have any memories from set that that you'll remember for the rest of your career? I mean, this is very silly, but it was bloody cold, <laughs> and uh, and. Colin likes a cigarette, and and there was a sequence where where we were in it, and you know we were doing our stuff, and 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 Colin was smoking a cigarette, and he and not usually on 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 set, people use on because you're having to do it over and over and over again, and you've got the same continuity, and you're having to cut you cut the the cigarette down to where it was when you last shot that scene, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. so you usually use fake cigarettes, and um. Uh, just because you're having to do it over and over and over and over again. Colin didn't. And then what was so amazing, we did like we did one of these sequences like 15, 20 times where where he's he's smoking the cigarette all the way through. And then as soon as there was a break, he'd go outside and have a cigarette in the <laughs> outside the church. And I'd go and stand with him. And uh, and I don't smoke anymore. And um, but it just really tickled me. He's like, I'm not going to miss out on my chance to have a cigarette. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, there was there was all sorts of things. There's, you know, there's, there's all stupid, funny shit where you're like dealing, you know, you're dealing with guns and 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 you're, you know, I I'm, I'm, I'm hesitating because obviously. Imagine why I'm hesitating. Um, we, we didn't have any live rounds. There was no live anything on the thing. But you know, when something doesn't work in the way that it's supposed to, and and you have to reset, and the dramatic bits got really dr dramatic, and then it goes, Peep, you know, and it doesn't do the thing it's supposed to do, and stuff like that. It's just, it, it's. I find, I've always found that when you're doing really sort of thriller based work and, and stuff that is 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 sort of quite tense the moments of comedy are are huge because it's such a relief to have a moment of comedy and and um yeah but nothing nothing massively sort of sort of uh, um we were so up against it we were working so hard I mean, it was a lovely time though, you know. One of the things about you about doing a film like that when you know you've got 12 days is it's a very galvanizing experience. You are you are absolutely sort of um you you're you're working against time and you're working under the gun and you are completely it's like this sort of oscillating mass, you know, of energy. And and I I really get off on that. I love it. Awesome. Um you mentioned that this was filmed in lockdown. That experience um, is like got to be quite the the difference, uh, like as an actor. I've done I've done I've done six films. Um, hang on. Yeah, uh, in lock in this in this last eighteen months. Mm. And um, they've all had different varying levels of, um, you know, the code that you have to sort of, whether it be Screen Actors Guild version of it or the, or the British equity version of it or the government guidelines and stuff. And, and everybody just wants to work. So you just get on with it. You know, there was the very first one that I did under lockdown. We all had to have masks the entire time, and they were only taken away when, when literally at the last minute. So you'd be holding the shield in front of your face the whole time, and and then as soon as like they they put the board in, they'd clap the board, then the masks would be taken out, and then I was just, it's amazing how fast we adapt. We yeah. just you you just work out what it what what it has to be. To move on to get the, to get the sequence and you just do it and and i found with with the kids you know everybody was so concerned about oh i don't want my kids to wear a mask at school the kids don't give a fuck 
the kids just want to go to school and see their friends. They'll do whatever. It's like it's 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 the grown ups being kind of like, oh, it's not right that have it's kids are adaptable. So mm. and so are so are actors. It's just like we just want to be working. So we'll just do whatever we need to do to make it happen, you know. Absolutely. Um, so do you have any preferred genres and any any favorite films? Oh my god. Um Genre wise, um, I'm 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 really I'm really straight down the line. I love straight down the line drama, love a thriller, love a comedy, but I don't particularly seek out sci-fi or 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 horror. Don't really love horror, um, but I really like thrillers. But my 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 go-to is always real life drama. I just watched. I don't know why I missed it the first time around, but I just watched another round about two weeks ago. Mm. Um, the Mads Mikkelsen film. I absolutely loved it. Um, I've been I've been catching up on all the Academy screeners. Um, funny enough, I just watched Licorice Pizza with my nineteen year old and um, big Paul Thomas Anderson fan, and and she was sort of unaware of the early Paul Thomas Anderson stuff, so. Found myself like ten minutes into Boogie Nights, deeply regretting watching Boogie Nights with my nineteen-year-old daughter. <laughs> Just like going, no, you must see this. This is an amazing film. That you you're gonna love this. It's like got young Phil Hoffman, young Wahlberg, young Julianne Moore. You know, it's just this amazing cast. It's ridiculous. And then kind of going, oops. I was, I was like. <laughs> I was like the audience in the producers, kind of going, well, what am I doing with my 19 year old? Yeah. Um, we, we sort of turned it off, decided to watch it separately. Um, now, a big Paul Thomas Anderson fan. Um, really liked Power of the Dog. Um, thought the score was incredible. Obviously, Johnny Greenwood's score, just absolutely fantastic. Um, um, Loved Sing Two. Who knew? I've seen the first one, haven't seen the second one yet. Great. Great. Our house have been singing it for weeks. It's great. Great. Great little films. Um, uh, so, w with this being a thriller, are there any genres that you haven't done yet that you'd like to? That's a good question. Good question. Oh my god. I mean, I'd love to do. I haven't really done done bits and pieces of this. I would love to do like, like a, a a chase movie. Like a like a proper like. I'd love to do like a Steve McQueen driving, like Midnight Run, like mm. chase movie. Midnight Run's a great movie. Um, proper cars running across. Me and me and a friend of mine actually wrote a um, wrote a pilot for a TV series called Run. That was um, that was about about a guy who has no choice because of the. A bunch of people being. I'm, I'm not. I'm going to protect this because it's a really great concept. Concept, um, yes. but it's about a guy who ends up having to. He has some information that people need, and he ends up having to run. And it takes place across the entire United States, and um, and car chases and running and hiding and. I, I really love that stuff. I'd, I'd love to do something in 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 that realm. Proper thriller, but but you know, the sort of north by northwest energy to it, where you're, you know, cat and mouse stuff. I, I'd love to do something like that. Awesome. Um, now I'm sure he's on the top of your list. Uh, with uh, but do you have a wish list of who you'd like to work with? Always, but but you know, having just I really love Licorice Pizza, and I, and. Tom Waits is my big hero. So seeing Tom Waits, I mean, some working with uh, Dream World, doing a Paul Thomas Anderson film opposite Tom Waits will be, will be like right, right up there. Um, uh, you know, and obviously, uh, just 
was really sort of taken by the mood and the power of, of, of power of the dog. Um, Jane Campbell's amazing. Obviously, worked with Anna. So mm -hmm. they've they've talked about working together again at some point. And um, you know, she, she's amazing. There's so many. Um, Wong Kar Wai is a big um, favorite of mine. I, it's there's just so many. There's, there's so many. I'd love to work with Andrea Arnold. You know, I think she's incredible. Mm, she is. Um, Len Ramsey too. You know, it's it, I could go on and on. There's hundreds. Mm, yeah, there are. It's work for choice. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's only that easy. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's great to have that the that um, that. Dream. that pool of, of, of available to you is wonderful um so uh with the popularity of streaming services like netflix what do you think the future of cinema is i think that's a really interesting question and i think it's evolving all the time the one thing that that is important about about netflix and i think and amazon what they've actually managed to be able to do is you know there's 400 500 hours of, of of television being made, whereas, you know, and I'm talking television series as opposed to, um, as opposed to hours of television, I'm talking about 400, 500 different projects. And what's that, what's amazing about that is they're not all brilliant, of course, but it means that our, our business is thriving. You know, England is busier than it's ever been in the history of, of the business. Mm. There's five different new studios being built in England. This is this is this is all good because young filmmakers, young directors, young writers, you know, quality between male and female, people of colour coming through. It's just it's just brilliant. You know, I love independent cinema. So the the, the as as I think one, one thing that would be amazing is for for those big companies to sort of channel 15, 20% of, of their, you know, all these films that, we, that I'm talking about, you know, we've been, I've been doing a million dollar movies or million dollar or under movies. And, um, and some by a long way. And, you know, having the opportunity to do that and give, give people coming out of college and young like, people the chance to do films like that at that budget would be amazing, and uh, so I can I can only see this being good for the business. And, and yeah, I love going to the cinema, of course, but um, but just the fact that these things are being made is 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 awesome. So I I am not pessimistic about the future of film. Um, obviously, you don't have to worry about, about the future of television because television is just like. Is well, 85, it's 85% of the business now, but mm. just I, I hope they just keep making. I hope those companies invest in young, interesting, independent drama, sci fi, you know, kids who, who, are, who are wanting to change things up. Absolutely. Yeah, and long may it continue. Uh, ju uh, just before you go, um, you've got yeah. a couple of very exciting projects coming up, coming out soon. Uh, yeah. What can you tell us about Last Survivors with the incredible Alicia Silverstone and Code of, ju and Code of Silence uh, with Ben Mole? Well, Code of Silence was, was just, again, 14 days, lovely. Managed to get a few friends of mine in that, which was really nice. Again, super low budget. Um, calling up friends going, can you come and give us two days? Can you give us four days? Can you give us a day here? Can you, you know, and Mike Higgs is a, one of my old, oldest friends, best friends, um, Alec Newman, Ian Sharp, Max Roxley. They're really good in that film. It's a really, really, really good little film about uh, Nipper Reed, who I play. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of it. It's, I think it's a really good little film. And, and, you know, I didn't necessarily think there needed to be a film made about the craze again, not that they're, not an interesting story, obviously, but it's been done a lot. Mm. So I thought it was really, really cool to do it from Nipper's point of view, and I really enjoyed playing that character. That's out now. Last Survivors is a really cool little thriller, three-hander, again, made in Montana with Alicia Silverstone and Drew Van Acker. 
Um, I'm brilliantly directed by Drew Milray, um, wonderfully shot and, uh, you know, excellent producers. And that comes out on February the 4th. And again, I literally left Confession um, last year, went straight from Confession, uh, sorry, end of 2019. And, uh, sorry, no, is that right? 2022, isn't it? No, the end of 2020. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Time's just gone. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> end of 2020, um, finished Confession, went and sat in a hotel room for a week, learned my lines in Montana and went and shot this. And, and, and it's a really classy little thriller. Really happy with it. Alicia was great. Uh, Drew's amazing. And again, really smart use of few locations. Um, great story, beautifully told, amazing music. It's just, it's just um, I really recommend it. I think it's a cracking little, cracking little film. Awesome, we'll look forward to those. Um, and just finally, where can we find you online to keep up with everything you're doing? I am quite rarely on Twitter, but um, on Twitter I'm on, uh, I'm S Moyer, and on Insta I'm at Stephen Moyer. But um, uh, the other thing that I've been doing is I directed a film this year with um, Anna Paquin, my wife, playing the lead, and Ray Winston playing her dad. And um, we're just locking that right now, just locked it. Uh, well, no, I'm about three days away from locking it. My ed edit suite is that, see that window over there? Yeah, yeah. The other side of that, that's my edit suite. And um, nice. next to the guitar. And um, yeah, very close to locking it. And then we'll be going into the dub and the mix. And um, my friend Nathan Barr is writing the music. He did the music for the first film that I directed and he did True Blood and he did the Americans, American Horror Story, does all the Eli Roth movies. Um, dear friend and excellent. And I'm really excited about that. He just literally just started writing music this week. I sent him the cut last week. So I'm really excited about that. We'll be going to festivals in I was just about to say in the new year, but I'm in the fucking new year. I can't believe it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we'll be going to festivals like in the next month or two with that. And, you know, hopefully we'll be able to keep you posted or it will be announced. Hopefully we'll get in somewhere. That's awesome. Uh, do you know what it's called yet? It's called A Bit of Light. Nice. We'll look out for that one. Well, yeah. Stephen, it's been absolutely amazing to speak to you. Thank you so Thank much. You um yeah um all the best to the family um all right mate. and uh yeah uh, we look out for everything you're doing thanks very much thank Take you, care. Cheers. All right. bye. See you later, man. bye bye thank you for watching the fan carpet please follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for more content next time so whatever happens tonight at least i can say i tried can you say the same largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com.
Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more. 